Have you ever been confused by all the different types of sports supplements you see available? In this video, we're going to talk about the sports supplements taken by a MyProtein athlete and talk about how they work. How's it going guys? My name is Richie Kerwin. I'm a nutritionist and nutrition researcher at Liverpool John Moores University and you are watching the My Protein YouTube channel. This is the channel that brings you need to know info on how to fuel your body and how to train to be your strongest self. So today we're gonna to be looking at the sports supplements taken by the My Protein athlete, Lubomba. Very, very important to say that I am not recommending any of the supplements you're going to see in this video. What we are going to do is we're going to talk about some of the ingredients in some of those supplements and how they work and how they may be able to help you improve your performance in the gym. Yo, what's up guys, it's Norma checking in. Today I'll be breaking down my supplements and when and how I use them. I like to keep it very simple and very straightforward, which you'll see in a second. And I'll explain the benefits of using these supplements and why they're relevant in what I do. I have my creatine, five milligrams, and my pre-workout. Two straightforward, easy. Okay, let's talk about two things here. Creatine and his pre-workout. Let's talk about creatine first. So creatine is probably the most tested and most well understood sports supplement available. What creatine does is it's used in high intensity exercise and what it does is it recharges a molecule in our body called ATP and for anybody who knows anything about physiology ATP is a molecule that is the energy currency of our cells. Every time we use ATP it gets turned into ADP and that needs to get recycled into ATP and we do that with creatine. Creatine, if we have high stores in our muscle, it allows us to recycle ATP really, really quickly, which allows us to perform more explosively in the gym. If you can perform more explosively, you can probably lift a little bit more, do a little bit more volume, and all that volume adds up and can potentially help you to build more muscle and get stronger. One thing I want to point out here is he's mentioning it together with his pre-workout. Now, everybody knows pre-workout, you take before your workout. But with creatine, it doesn't matter when you take it. The only thing that's important with creatine is that you take it daily. For most people, three to five grams are absolutely fine. And what happens is if you take it daily, levels build up in your muscles, they plateau and they remain there. So that means your muscles are saturated with creatine. So it doesn't matter when you take it. You take it morning, noon, night, before a workout, after a workout, it doesn't matter. Just take it daily. Go to supplements before I train. One scoop, one scoop, five milligrams, one heaping scoop, that kicks that off my workout. Okay, I'm gonna talk about a couple of ingredients in the pre-workout. So one of those is L-citrulline. L-citrulline is an interesting compound because what it does is it can help to release something called nitric oxide in your blood. And the function of nitric oxide is it causes our blood vessels to dilate or to get bigger. You might wonder why is that important? Well. Potentially, if your blood vessels are dilated, you can pump more blood into your muscles, which allows you to work a little bit harder in the gym. So some studies have shown that it can increase the amount of reps to failure that somebody can perform on a given exercise. So it may help you get a little more volume in the gym. And like we said earlier, volume, if you get more of it, can potentially help you to grow muscles. One thing that's really, really important with L-citrulline is that you take enough of it. So doses in the range of six to eight grams, okay, and that is a big dose. Six to eight grams of L-citrulline are what's shown to be beneficial in studies. So make sure you're getting enough. Another thing is that you take it at the right time. So about 45 minutes to an hour before your strength training session is about to begin, okay? You want to give enough time to the supplement to get into your blood so you can start feeling the benefits. You see a lot of people walking into the gym and taking their pre, pre-workout or taking their energy drink as they're walking into the gym about to start their session. That is pointless. They are going to get the benefits of those supplements 45 minutes into their session. So as they're ending up their session, potentially. Uh, so don't be those guys. Make sure you take it 45 minutes to an hour beforehand. Another compound that you'll find in this supplement is something called beta alanine. So beta alanine is the supplement that's responsible for that itchy feeling, itchy skin that you get with some pre-workouts. It's an effect called paresthesia. It's perfectly safe, but it does feel weird, especially if you're not expecting it. 
Now, beta alanine helps by increasing levels of a compound called carnosine in your muscles. When carnosine levels are high, we can use it as a lactic acid or a hydrogen ion, more specifically, buffer. What that means is that when we're working out, we generate hydrogen ions, and they're actually what cause that burning sensation if we're working out really, really hard. If you've got plenty of carnosine, you can buffer those hydrogen ions, you feel less pain, and you can potentially do a few more reps. And like I said earlier, if you can get more reps in, you can get in more volume, you can train harder, and you can potentially grow a little bit more. Now, here's something really, really important with beta alanine. Beta alanine is similar in the way you take it to creatine. You need to take it daily. Like I said, you want to build up the levels of carnosine in your muscles. And to do that, you have to load creatine for a certain amount of time. All of the studies that show beneficial effects of beta alanine in a sports situation are taking doses of between four and six grams of beta alanine a day. Okay, and you need to take it daily. Again, doesn't matter if you take it before a session or after a training session, just take it every day. So read your supplement labels, make sure you're getting four to six grams every day. And ideally, you should be taking beta alanine alone because you're probably not going to be training every day. Finally, the real star of any pre-workout is going to be caffeine, okay? And this one contains a good 300 milligrams of caffeine and that is a decent kick. Your average cup of coffee probably contains less than 100 milligrams of caffeine. And caffeine works pretty simply. It helps to reduce sensations of fatigue when we're training. It makes us feel like we have more energy. It also makes us feel like we can do a little bit more. And that's usually enough to help us perform a little bit better in the gym. Again, it's all about being able to do more work in the gym. That's how these supplements can potentially help. So caffeine can probably help you do a few more reps, get through a slightly harder session, and over time that all adds up to more strength and more muscle. Let's see what else is in this. Gym up to weight. So for my post-workout, two bananas, two scoops of whey, 21 grams of protein, a pair scoop, low and fat. Just gonna pause here. Look at the size of his arms. Sugar, pretty simple, right? Okay, for his post workout, he takes whey protein and a couple of bananas. Whey protein is probably one of the highest quality protein supplements you can take. Do you need to take a protein supplement after your training? Not necessarily. You could have a high protein meal just with some meat or eggs or other protein sources, but Protein powders can be a really convenient way, especially if you're busy, if you're in a rush. Taking a protein powder can be a really quick way to get that protein into your body after a session. The great thing about whey protein is that it's really, really quickly absorbed and it contains a lot of leucine. Leucine, as we know, is the amino acid that helps to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. And that's exactly what you want to do after a heavy training session. and ensure that the muscle, of course, is a source of aminos to recover. Okay, so he takes a pre-bed protein supplement. So just to give you an idea, why would you want to take some protein before you go to bed? Well, if you think about it, when we're sleeping, that's probably one of the longest periods of time most people are going to go without food. You're going to go to bed, you're going to be eight hours, hopefully, without eating anything. What's going to happen in that time is we're going to have an increase in something called muscle protein breakdown. It's perfectly normal, it happens while we sleep. But if you take some protein before you go to bed, you can increase muscle protein synthesis, the process that we use for building muscle, just before you go to bed, and you can hopefully sustain that for a few hours while you're sleeping. So that'll reduce the overall amount of muscle protein breakdown. So in the long run, it may potentially help you build more muscle. It's also a good way to increase your total daily protein. Again, you don't need to take a protein powder before you go to bed. You could use something like a high protein dairy product like quark or a cottage cheese. But for some people, it may be more convenient to have a protein powder. And if you're taking a protein powder before you go to bed, just make sure that it's predominantly casein. So what's casein? 
in milk, we have two main types of protein. We have about 20% whey proteins, which are soluble, and then we've got about 80% casein proteins, which are insoluble. And when we're making cheese, those casein proteins are what coagulate together and actually form the cheese. Now, the big difference between casein and whey protein is that casein is much more slowly digested. So that means if you take it before you go to bed, it's going to get into your bloodstream slower and it's going to have a slower, more steady release of amino acids while you're sleeping. And potentially that can help with a little bit of muscle growth during the night. Remember, it's not going to completely change your life if you're taking protein before you go to bed. But like I said, it could help you increase your total daily protein and help get a little bit more muscle growth in there over time. Course the gainer. This is a bonus in my stack, so especially when I'm trying to add more mass and increase my calorie intake. A low sugar alternative to a mass gainer is probably the best option for me because I do not want to again overdo on the sugar, but make sure that I get my calories in and my protein intake and carbohydrates, which are essential when you're bulking. So, we're looking at a mass gainer, and mass gainers generally consist of two things protein and a source of calories. And those calories can be either carbohydrates, and usually a lot of carbohydrates, and maybe some fats. The whole point of a mass gainer is to get a lot of protein and a lot of calories into your body. For people who have difficulty gaining weight or who are trying to get a lot of calories, who are burning a lot of calories during the day. Again, do you need a mass gainer? Absolutely not. You can get all of this through whole foods. But for some people, it can be a really, really convenient way to get all of those calories into your body in a quick and efficient, and maybe even a cheap way too. So, in terms of vitamins, vitamins and minerals are essential, if you didn't know. Vitamins and minerals are essential, now you know. We need these for our body to function properly. Of course, immune system, as well as cognitive purposes, so zinc and magnesium, vitamin supplements that help if I go to bed, Okay, so zinc and magnesium. What he's taking here is something called uh, ZMA, zinc, magnesium, and aspartic acid. And the aspartic acid is actually uh, a form of pyridoxy, B6. A lot of people take ZMA because they think that it is going to boost their testosterone. Now, unless your zinc and magnesium levels are really, really low and you're deficient, it's probably not going to have any effect. And we don't have any solid studies that show that it increases testosterone at all. But if you're deficient, or if you have a really, really poor diet, which I really hope you don't, and you need to sort that out with a better diet quality, maybe it could help improve your zinc levels. There's not gonna be really any improvement in your testosterone. There's also some people who say that magnesium can help with sleep. Again, there's not a huge amount of conclusive evidence to say that it does. Some people might find it benefits, probably not. And we'll go vitamin D3 and vitamin B12. Vitamin D3 is probably one of the most important vitamins anybody can take. The reason I say that is because vitamin D in general, it's not found in our diets in high enough levels, unless you're eating a lot of liver. And if you eat too much liver, you could get too much vitamin D. Mostly we form vitamin D when we get sunlight on our skin. And I don't know about you, but most people here in the UK are not getting that at the best of times, and especially not with COVID right now. So, taking a vitamin D supplement is a really, really good idea because there are huge amounts of people in the population that are suffering from vitamin D3 deficiency. A D3 supplement is a really good idea. Taking anything between one and maybe even 4,000 international units of vitamin D a day could be a good idea. It's also a good idea, potentially, if you're worried about it, to get your vitamin D levels checked. He also takes vitamin B12. Now, funnily enough, B12 deficiency is actually pretty common. It's more common in people who are following a vegan diet because it does not occur in plant foods naturally. Uh, so if you have a poor quality diet, taking some B12 may be a good idea, especially if you are a vegan. If you are, it is definitely something you should be supplementing with. So these two will be very difficult to consume through food alone. Supplementation is the most logical thing to do. So guys, that's my basic protein intake and what I've been using, especially in the last three months in the lockdown. Woo! I feel like I said a lot there. Guys, just wanna check it in, check it out.
Okay, so he takes a lot of supplements. The thing is, you don't need to take a huge amount of supplements to get big and strong. There are some that are really, really beneficial that we just don't get from our diet really easily, like vitamin D3, for example, creatine, for example, really, really solid ones to take. Other ones like taking a protein supplement or a protein powder can be really, really beneficial because they're convenient. They might be cheaper for you as well than getting whole foods. But remember, the base of your diet needs to be based and built around whole, healthy foods that are gonna help you with your goals. They're gonna provide you with a lot of vitamins, minerals, fiber, and all of the other good stuff that you need to stay healthy. And if you can stay healthy longer, you can train better and you can get bigger and stronger. So, what do you think of the video? Answer any questions for you? Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video.